Hey, this is Patrick with the Mad Bros Media Zoom show and podcast. And today, my special guest is Marilyn Gigliotti. How are you doing? Hi, thank you for having me. It's been a, it's it's an honor to have you on here. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So as an icebreaker, I always tell everybody, how, how have you been during the COVID? How have you been hanging out? I'm surviving. Um, I, and I haven't gotten sick. Thank God. Knock mm. on wood. Um, yeah. I, I got my first uh, shot. Um, mm. Monday is going to be three weeks, wow. I, I think. Yeah. Um, had a couple of side effects with that, um, which I'm not surprised because it's like one of the things that I ante anticipated because I get side effects from practically any kind of medication that I do take. So I, I was a little worried, um, but uh, I'm more worried about the second one. <laughs> yeah, I had the second shot and I was OK, but there's a couple of people who had the first shot and they had like they were sick for days. Oh, so, see that that I, thankfully that's not what happened to me. It's like yeah. I this this area right here, mm. um, and it's still tender, but I my lymph nodes are kind of in in tender there and uh, swollen, and I think it might have gotten into the lymph nodes here. But um, on a whole, um, you know, uh, it's 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 been okay. Um, on and off from work. Um, you know, I work in a salon and so things, you know, mm. close down, open up, close down, open up. So we'll see. We'll see now if we're indefinitely opened. Uh, now was uh, hair, the hairdressing was that and makeup, was that your first passion or acting was your first passion? Well, um, I mean, growing up, I, I did have an interest with the acting, mm. but to say that I was extremely shy would be an understatement. Mm. Um, also, it's not like I really knew that that's something that I could do. Mm. It's not something that was in my my surroundings that that that's possible to even do, even as as a, a hobby or whatever, you know. Mm. Um, so, yeah, when I was in high school, I did. Well, my high school actually had where I, if I wanted to, I could have taken a cosmetology course there, mm -hmm. but biology was a requirement and, and um, I didn't want to dissect a frog to learn how to do hair. Yeah. So that was kind of out of the question there. Mm -hmm. um, and I also did try out for um, a couple of the school plays, um, although I never really got uh, because, well, I tried out for the musicals. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not like I'm a musical person or anything like that. So that never happened. So you can say that kind of first, both of them were kind of at, at, at the same level as far as passions. <laughs> um, but it wasn't until I was all grown up, married and, and uh, had my own daughter and all um, that. And I did start a, just after my daughter was born, I did start going to cosmetology, cosmetology classes and mm -hmm. became a hairstylist. And then once my life was kind of changing again, then that's when I kind of started looking at the acting and, and kind of really fell in love with that part of it. And then you got the, the role of Veronica. Yeah. <laughs> now, how, how, did the, how did that come about? How did the, the, the clerk's script get into your lap did you see an audition the uh the uh listening for the audition or did someone give you word of mouth or so um i i actually trained first for a couple of years before mm -hmm. i even felt comfortable to start auditioning for community theater and once I was in the community theater circuit um i had actually worked with brian as well mm -hmm. on the circuit that found out about these auditions that were going to be held at a local community theater that we had both worked at. And so just went to the auditions and we had to do a monologue. And I don't recall how much after that, uh, that audition that Kevin called me up and he wanted me to go to the uh, convenience store and uh, talk to him, pick up the script take it home with me, see if I was comfortable mm. uh, because of, you know, things that were said and talked about. Um, and uh, so 
I read it while I was at work and I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a fast read for me. Um, and so I pretty much told them, yeah, I definitely, I'm in. Uh, Wikipedia says that uh, when you did the audition, you cried on cue, and that's why Kevin chose you. Is that true? I mean, yes, to 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 degree. I mean, mm-hmm. because the monologue is kind of a, an emotional monologue, and yeah, I I got emotional, but honestly, it's like I have done that monologue so much better and i keep saying this and it's like Mm -hmm. and and brian he's like what is i got you the part didn't it and and kevin says the same thing but it's like well yeah but still you know it's like we as actors are very critical about our work and you know and so when you haven't done how you wanted it to do it i mean yeah you're gonna you're gonna critique it so i critique it Um, so, I mean, yes, I got emotional, but I just, I felt like it wasn't as pure as I would have liked it to be. Mm-hmm. And, and since then, you've played many roles. You've played in sci-fi. You've been a teacher, a hair salon, or, yeah, a girl who works in a hair salon, a mother. Mm-hmm. Is there a role that you're dying to play that hasn't, hit, hasn't played yet? There used to be. Um, but now I'm way too old to play the part. <laughs> um, and uh, it was it was on stage where I actually had the misfortune, not really, uh, of being cast in two uh, staged plays mm-hmm. at the same time. And one of them was the one that I just really had hoped all, to always play. Mm-hmm. And it was a line in winter playing uh, a lace. Wow. wow. Yeah. And so with the British accent, you know, and the, mm-hmm. the, the period clothes, I mean, ah, that was just, yes. Um, but I also had the opportunity to be in a two person play uh, you know, and it's just the two of us throughout the whole thing, and that's the same time next year, and uh, very iconic film. And so I was just like, I, I couldn't, as much as I wanted to do the other, I couldn't pass up the the, the opportunity to, to be a lead in this play that also would challenge me. Now. Uh... You also did infomercial. What infomercial did you do hair and makeup for? I, I was reading that too. Um, quite a few, actually. No. <laughs> it's yeah, I couldn't even no. tell you. There's just so many. Um, yeah, there's just so many. <laughs> oh well. So, uh, what's uh, Brian like off stage and off screen? I know you knew him before Clerks. Mm-hmm. What what's what's he like hanging out with? Because I know you guys have hung out like Comic Cons and yeah. all kinds of places. Then you know he's like family at this point, as is Scott and Ernie, Kevin, and all them. You know they're, they're just they're family to me. Um, and hanging out with with Brian, it's always a fun time, good time. You know, and we look out for each other. And you know he's he's a funny guy. He is a funny guy. He's a very knowledgeable guy. Um, If there's ever anything that I kind of need information on um, or advice, uh, especially in the entertainment business, it's like, you know, I just give him a ring or text him and, you know, he's he's pretty, you know, easy as as far as uh, getting all the information that I need for for myself. Hmm. Um, Tell us about your latest project, Thursday the 12th. The Thursday the 12th, mm. I really don't know a whole heck of a lot about um, it, only because um, I, ha- the only part that I saw, I haven't read yeah. the whole script. I never was given the whole script. Mm-hmm. In fact, funny story to this is that one one morning I got up, I got myself all ready. Mm-hmm. I go to the store to Big Lots. And just as I'm getting out of the car to go into the store, I get a phone call from Bradley O'Lion, who's the writer director. Um, and he's like, Hey, how you doing? Um, you know, just chit chatting. And, and then he says, it's like, so um, how'd you like to come out to, I forget where, we're, where we even filmed. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> it's like, well, so I got this role. And so I was thinking about you. And uh, so, yeah, it's like, but we're filming tonight. I'm like, 
uh, or tomorrow, something like that. I'm like, uh, uh, what? Um, so basically, I had to leave the store, immediately come home, pack some clothes. I didn't even know what I was going to be packing, packing but it's like a, basically a carry-on. Drive to the airport, and once I got there is when I got all my information of where it was that I was going to be flying out of. Um, so that was that, and then, and then I got my lines that I learned on the plane. Um, but I, I essentially play a gypsy type character ish, mm -hmm. and without giving a lot away there, <laughs> that's the, that's the best way that I can put it. And essentially, it's um, as if I might have put a curse on the main characters uh -huh. I think that's, on the I day before the day before friday uh -huh. the 13th which is oh, thursday wow. the 12th because i saw um, they had like a little promo poster and todd bridges was on the front too yes never got <laughs> to meet him and todd bridges on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i did see the trailer very recently uh -huh. unfortunately they have not released the trailer yet so once i get the okay to share it uh -huh. once they share it to me <laughs> then i'll i'll be posting it out there cool but yeah that's most of the information i got really <laughs> okay because it says i was looking on idb it says it's completed so maybe you had yeah yeah of it or, or like a screening of it already well, no and um it it took a while because oh gosh it's been a few years mm -hmm. that i actually shot that probably four maybe anywhere from four to six years i'm not even sure mm -hmm. and um they probably would have been released last year had covid not happened yeah so because he was looking to also do kind of the um the tour of movie theaters the mm -hmm. way uh kevin did uh reboot mm -hmm. um but you know what what is your favorite comic con that you've been to and who was somebody that like oh wow i can't believe i met him at this con you know i i i have to say that going overseas mm -hmm. either to australia or to london both mm -hmm. of them um is definitely a highlight um but to pick one over the other i can't yeah. um i i really honestly it's ask anyone who's ever asked me that question as far as picking a favorite of anything. Mm -hmm. I don't like to have to, you know, choose one out of yeah. so many things. Um, and, and again, it's like, there have been so many people that have been so amazing that I've met, um, you know, some of them, you know, still kind of keep in touch with as far as like on social media, um, but it's it's really a great experience. Um, one of the things that I really do enjoy doing and I miss doing, and 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 that's not even just the celebrities that you get to meet. It's mm. also the fans as well. Some of them actually have become friends, mm. so that's a nice part. So has it come to the point where you're tired of the number thirty-seven, <laughs> or has it just been okay? Even when I'm eighty, I'm still going to hear that number. I'm going to hear that number till the day I die and probably pass that as a ghost. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that is part of my life. I, uh, I can't, I can't negate that. That, that is the reason that people know me. So, you know, I have to embrace it. And if anything, I will mock it myself. Uh, um, you know, but on that note, mm -hmm. there is a fine line. Yeah on how people present it and make a joke about it. And some people have crossed that line. Um, you know, sometimes I will kind of say something in a nice way. Sometimes I don't have to because other people will say it for me. <laughs> yeah, because for, for some reason I had a, a thought today. It's like, I wonder if she'll ever open up her own salon one time, call it Veronica's and then like, the person who has like the gets like the 37th time to get it free or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never open up my own salon. It's like I, at this point in my life, I mean, that's not what I really wanted to be doing yeah. even this, this, this long, but um, you know, I, I would have preferred to have been 
making a living as an actor for quite some time now. It's the reason why I moved out to LA, but you know, sometimes life has um, different choices and sometimes, you know, for whatever reason that is unaware to yourself, Mm -hmm. um, things have to play out a certain way. And sometimes the road will take its turns and you have to kind of go with those turns because sometimes it's supposed to happen a different way than you thought. Um, that's anyway, one of the things that I'm learning. So, <laughs> so, you know, um, but yeah, the, it's, it's taken a toll on my body now at this point too, as well. Um, because doing freelance, it's like, it's a lot of luggage that I got to lug around. Um, wow. and, uh, yeah, it's, you know, I don't know how much longer I can do it. So finding other things to supplement then. <laughs> Any hints on clerk street? That's, that's <laughs> one of the questions here. I know that I know you've said in the past, I haven't heard nothing, but Kevin's Kevin's got a script out and I know Brian says I've read it and it's good. So I don't know if he sent it to you. I mean, I know you probably can't say much, but I, how, I much of, how much of uh, Veronica is in the movie? Can you say that? You know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, as far as whether I can say that or not. So I'm going to defer on not, <laughs> but I did get to read it. Um, I got to read the first draft. I have not read any draft after that, but, um, I loved it. I, um, one of the notes that I sent back to Kevin was, it's like, I laughed, I cried, I hysterically laughed, I hysterically cried. That's all I'm going to (laughs) say. That's going to keep us intrigued. (laughs) But so, I, I think I think people will like it. So is there any other future projects aside from Clerk Street that uh, you're filming right now? Uh, not No, nothing right now. Um, I've auditioned for quite a few things lately. I've got a new manager, so I'm excited for that. Um, you know, it's kind of for maybe some new opportunities to open up. Um, and it's, it's funny because in the last couple of weeks I've been watching some shows and I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. I auditioned for that. (laughs) So, so then I was like, then my focus kind of changes and I'm like, okay, watch what it is that they did. And it's like, all right, that's very different than what I did. So, um, but trying the, the main focus right now is, and has been for quite some time is trying to break into the TV uh, show wise, um, you know, in whatever capacity, um, in, so that then I've got film and I've got TV as well, you know, there, there's, in whatever format. There's lots of TV. And I mean, you, I mean, you got so many channels, like you have got Netflix, you got Hulu, you've got mm-hmm. Paramount. So there's, there's, I know, I know you're going to be on those channels one of these days, right? <laughs> well, thank you. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, what I really need to do is get some new headshots, um, and, and get them posted and, um, you know, just, uh, make, make them see something in me, well, you know, okay. to actually call me in for an audition, you know, if anything. Mm-hmm. Like a Yellowstone or, or, you know, you'd be great in a Western. I haven't, well, I think, I think I saw maybe one of your future projects of Western. No. I'm trying to think. I mean, I was like, no, I'm just looking at your stuff. Myself, yeah. Like, but yeah, I'm trying but, to remember my stuff. Yeah. But yeah, well, Yellowstone would be good. I mean, they're making a Yellowstone prequel, so. I don't know if I've seen that. Oh, and actually, yes, this I'm sorry. Kevin Cosner. Mm. There, there was there was something that I was in a period costume for. Um, and um, it, it's, uh, I don't know that it was going to be a big role or anything like that, if it was going to be a recurring role at all. Um, but uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, oh my gosh, hold on a second. I got I to gotta pull up the IMDB here. And it's called At the End of the Santa Fe Trail. Uh-huh. Uh, um, that is based upon a book upon a, about a true story about this uh, woman who uh, is a nun and kind of went, you know, back into the West. And, and, and mm-hmm. so I, I, when I auditioned for that role, I had to do 
uh, part of the dialogue in English, but also part of the dialogue in Italian. Mind oh, you, wow. I don't speak Italian. I speak Spanish. I know. <laughs> I, I read that too. I was going to ask you too. Have you tried to uh, uh, auditioning for novellas? No. no. I mean, it's like, and here's the thing. It's like, no. yeah, I speak Spanish and I speak it fluently enough, but but I got to say, you know, and especially Puerto Rican Spanish is very different from Mexican Spanish, from Dominican Spanish, from, you, you know, whatever. Well, yeah, I'm, my, my, my dad's from Costa Rica, so that dialect, okay. so he always tells me the dialects are different than South America and Central America. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah, and, and not even just dialogues, dialects. It's also yeah. kind of certain, certain words as well, yeah. well and, and how it is that they deliver or their meaning behind it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, saying the Italian words, it's like I just, you know, did the whole look it up on the, you know, <laughs> translator yeah. And, yeah. and listen to how it was pronounced. And, yeah. and so I learned the lines that way. But once I got to set... Mm -hmm. And I even asked prior, it's like, all right, should I deliver all the lines in Italian or just part of the lines? Mm -hmm. And and if I do deliver it in English, you know, with an Italian accent kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, no, no, you know, just, you know, just uh, a couple of the lines, you know, this this is what the way that you did it for the audition. It's like, okay. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe about, I don't know. Third, uh, maybe about an hour before it was set to be on set. Oh, we're going to have you deliver them all in Italian. So it's like, okay. <laughs> so we're all okay. And yeah. then just, just repeat, just repeat, repeat, yeah. repeat. And thank yeah. God it was only uh, maybe four lines. And I already had two of the lines down anyway. Cause uh, mm -hmm. so, but yeah, <laughs> still, it's been kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. It was fun to do that. Cool. Cool. All right. So thank you so much, Marilyn Gigliotti, for being on the Mad Bros Media Show. Also catch our full interview on Kevin's Kids Podcast. If they want an autograph photo signed or lasagna pan signed by you, where can they get it on the web? Um, so they can go to my website and I, I wish I could just say it's a, it's a regular.com but unfortunately I have a Wix site um, wow. I just transferred everything back to GoDaddy um, so hopefully maybe I'll, I'll do that uh, soon enough but okay. if you go to um, either of my social medias either Instagram or Facebook there's a link uh, there's a link okay. that you can go to and it'll go to all of my different sites and it'll go to my website where you there's a link for the store as well as its separate link uh, to my square store. Cool. I'll make it easier for the viewers. I'll post it where we're talking about it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again for being on our show, Marilyn. Thank you so much for All having right. me on. Thank you. Hopefully in the future, when there's cons again, you'll be down here. We can meet again and talk again. Hopefully, hopefully. Cool. All right, this has been Patrick with the Mad Bros Media Zoom Show Podcast.